are you? Where's the Apple computer? He's upstairs. Is this better? Look at you. Oh, hey, my. Yeah, we got you, Mike. How are you doing today? Uh, got some echo going on here. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Uh, try to, to turn down your computer speakers. That's usually what's feedback. Mike, you're on there twice. <laughs> and you're on mute twice. All right, yeah. folks, so we are live, so whenever you're ready, feel free. Oh, uh, you're still <laughs> muted there, Mike. We lost him. You're Here muted, he. Mike. Press the space bar. He's back. How about this? Perfect. Good. Yeah, that's great. system resources. All right. Go live, now? get the show on the road. Can we hear me? Yes. Um, yes. It's not on the tigers. What is nothing that? Is, nothing is functional at the moment. So, Your video uh, is. Yep, we're both uh, seeing and hearing you, Mike. Okay, well, we'll go with this then. So, um, oh. somewhat delayed, we'll get this started. Um, oh, Mike. I need a, a, to do the pledge, right? Right. So, all right. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States of America, America. To the Republic, the Republic, Republic which stands for one nation under God, yeah. indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay. As I flip between two separate computers here, which is always a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't eat all those. Um, we need a roll call. Snyder. So, here. Nye. Here. Hurst. Here. Duff. Here. Here. Martini. Here. Here. Sergeant. Here in more ways than one, I guess. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so our, um, has everybody had a chance to look over the minutes? Yes, it is. Okay. Any additions, subtractions, or corrections? Nope. nope. No? Okay, so we'll need a, um, a, a motion for to accept the min minutes as presented. I move we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Second, second yeah. All right. Do we have a second? I didn't hear. Several. Okay, then uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Um, oh, great. All right, next on the list, if I remember correctly, because this is clearly overwhelming my computer. Uh, is Agenda additions. Is the what? Agenda additions. Right. John, you had an agenda agenda addition, correct? 
Let me uh, let me unmute my monitor. And the answer, the answer to that is that. Is it my phone, my doing, phone doing the echo? Good Lord. Um, why don't I go on and come on? Uh, but I'll add the addition. If you can still hear me. Still hear me. Yeah, John, can you mute your computer audio on Zoom? Um, that's where we're getting that echo from, I believe. Because you can still hear us through your phone there. Yep. Okay, that should be better. Okay. Well, there were a couple. Uh, number one. Number one. <laughs> and I'm going to try signing back in. Uh, but number one is uh, the, the question of whether the village should pick up any and all harvested weeds that are floating in for property owners. And also engage our uh, garbage company if you want to uh, pick up those weeds. Let me retry my This is driving me crazy. <laughs> okay. Incur. Yeah. If yeah. everybody else could could uh, mute their microphones while someone else is talking, that will kind of help with the whole feedback issue. So if you're not talking, if you can can mute for us. Yeah, and to unmute, you just have to press and hold space bar. All right, John, why don't you try again for us? I think John's dialing back in, but I guess from what I heard there, right, he wants to add to the agenda a discussion topic about the village picking up lake weeds that are floating to resident shorelines and engaging a garbage company to pick them up at the street level. That was my understanding. That's correct. My understanding also. Okay, so where do you want to add that on the agenda? Uh, under that would be under new business A, wouldn't it? Sure. Yep. Okay, so we'll add that there. Any I'd other addition? Yes, I'd also like to add a short piece to talk a little bit about the special assessment district. It'd be new business B, I suppose. Promise to be short. I already am short. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I want to. I want to add three. Okay. I'd like so, to, I want, uh, I'd like. Hold on, uh, Sherry could, um, so B would be the special assessment district. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mike. I'd like to add the uh, non-village fishing tournaments back onto the agenda. I'd like to add uh, transponders onto the agenda and the virtual Michigan Inland Lake Conference. Okay. So that'd be C, D, and E? Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike working now, can you hear me? Yes, quite well. Yes. Nice. Yes, John. All right, I had to go in and uh, screw around with the sound card. Uh, might be one more, and that was uh, the recommendation uh, that we got in from Paul uh, regarding the uh, canal system. I didn't know. Are you going to add that yourself, Catherine? Or it's already on, I think. Is it? Okay. We, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Okay, never mind. If it's on, we'll uh, we'll go for it. Isn't that what you added, Paul? Yeah, I was I was after the special assessment this day. Yeah, so that's two different things, right? So Paul's talking sewer special assessment, and John Scott's talking about the uh, proposal that came from Progressive AE regarding the canal muck study. So I say we just talk about the progressive thing under the standing. Under the standing. There. That's fine. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and So the call to the public. Any public or no? We have to uh, make a motion to uh, uh, amend the agenda. Accept the agenda as amended. I, yes, I make a motion to accept the agenda yep. as amended. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
All right. Um, okay, so are there any publics on here? Anybody from the public? No, okay, so we'll move on to administration report, current lake level. I saw it was provided to us by lake level. Here we are. Nope, that isn't it. Uh, it is 918.35. So let's right in there. Quite a little high right now. Yeah, I, I noticed it was a little high myself, but um, all right, no worthy complaints. I know we've had some. So do we want uh, this is generally where Ryan comes in with his Facebook <laughs> summary. Yeah, I mean it's it's we had some complaints for weeds that I kind of forwarded along that people got addressed. I think the big thing that's out there is people complaining about uh, weeds accumulating on their shoreline after they're either cut by props of boats or uh, the harvester. So lots of, obviously lots of theories on what it could be and what, what a fix might be. But I think this would go into uh, the topics that John asked to add for new business as far as village managing, taking up the weeds after they're pulled out of the lake. I think that's kind of the main thing uh, that's, that people are complaining about. Well, one of those things, All right. we're using the harvester more and uh, it doesn't it doesn't get 100% of everything it, it picks up, right? And there's a lot of boat traffic. So those two things combined, um, lots, lots, of, lots of weeds floating in people's shores and that's the primary complaint. So, Okay. Um, any other complaints that anybody's heard of? I have a question about those weeds, and I've got them too, but is there any way that could be seasonal based on uh, the weather or the time of year? Because it's not consistently with uh, boat traffic. It doesn't seem to be consistently with boat traffic or um, the harvester. Sometimes I get weeds when it doesn't sound like either going on. So is there any way that could be? I, I took pictures. Do something as part of the pictures. process? Yeah, I took pictures from that were posted online and pictures of the ones that were all floating at my shore. And they're definitely not weeds that are natively are floating, right? They're, they've been cut and they accumulate on the surface. So maybe you got weeds back by you? Yeah, floating wheat. That's why when people say it's the harvester, it's very hard to believe because that means yeah. it came okay. from under the bridge and around. It's right. No, no unlikely. Way. And I've got, you know, weeds that are cut that are 12, 14 inches long that just because it's long doesn't mean it's from the harvester. But right. there's lots of boat traffic hitting the sunset cruise every day and there's weeds in the lake. So it's from something. Uh, but I confirmed with Paul they're cut, right? It's not like probably a, my prop. Probably. But it's probably it's not like a, a a weed that floats naturally and appears okay. in the summer or something. Did you want to go into that topic while we're here, or we're gonna move? Did you move it to an item number? Didn't you? I didn't quite hear. That. Yeah, it, yeah, it's we're gonna cover it under new business A. Hey, okay, excellent. How's that? That's got to be better. Yeah. And just for reference, when I when I talked to Progressive on it, they basically got back and said it looks like a combination of water, stargrass, celery, and chara, all native and almost exclusively from boat chop. To answer your question, Mike, um, yes, it is seasonal. There, there are seasonal things that go on. 
And so um, you, uh, you're going to get a lot more weeds in the, in the fall than you do in the uh, springtime because they're closer to their surface and props can get at them. So. Um, okay. Uh, chairperson's report. No, the chairperson is still busy trying to figure out how to get rid of uh, Tiger Stadium here. Um, so we can skip over to number nine, new business, which is uh, which is the weed pickup. So if John, if you want to jump in here and let it go. Sure. <clears throat> let me give you a little history. It's not the first time it has come to the water board. I would think over 14 or 15 years, I've heard it every other season. Uh, there are certain homeowners whose homes, particularly on the uh, northwestern end of the lake at times, uh, pick up a lot of weeds and coves. And uh, the discussions have always been threefold. One, uh, should the village be responsible for picking up weeds at the, the lake edge of somebody's home? And uh, for the most part, the board and the council has pushed back on that. Um, with one or two different questions coming out and never being answered, what happens if they're senior citizens? I happen to be one myself, but uh, uh, let's say that they are not um, physically able to pick up the weeds, as I think we all know they can get fairly heavy. Uh, there was never a solution to that, uh, other than saying uh, that same person probably is having somebody cut their grass or pay for it in their own pocket. Then transporting it out to the street once it's picked up was also then another question that was raised. And now we're trans transgressing private property. It's just not a place for the village to be. And then finally, um, we did at times set up on a seasonal basis, uh, pickups. And it wasn't very productive. Um, not everybody was bringing their weeds out at the same time. It was scheduled to be uh, literally at the same time of the normal garbage pickup, uh, Monday, for example, in the village, or Tuesday in the village. Uh, I guess Monday, I'm sorry. Uh, and so it all continued to be tried and then be passed into the history of not being done. So we can discuss any other ideas you might have on the board to see if there's other ways to handle this issue. I think it becomes sporadic, it's seasonal, and it's not something that's, um, if you would, uh, uh, spread equally around the village is a problem. So chime in guys and gals. I, so so, who actually comes and gets the yard waste down by us? Because it's usually a pickup truck and not a uh, not a full garbage truck. Is that still through the garbage or is that through the village? No, that actually happens to be because of, uh, they do send out a, a separate truck because the is a large uh, trash truck to get onto the island and down the small cubbies, particularly down in Canal. But is, so, it, is it is it a is it through the garbage service or is it through the village? No, it's a garbage service. I mean, to me, it, at best, it should be like an on-demand type thing uh, where somebody might be able to call. It. I mean, some some of the pictures people do have uh, outrageous amount, right? Where it could be multiple garbage cans uh, that that offering something that's an on-demand that the village can come pick them up and we're picking up all the rest of the weeds, right? Can we have somebody from DPW pick them up and throw it in the weed pile that we have? I think that would be reasonable. I think having us pull them out of the lake or drag them across somebody's property seems completely unreasonable to me. Okay. It's just part of lake maintenance living on a lake. So, so one thing that I want to bring to council is as a recommendation to see whether or not there could be a day, maybe once a month, I don't know, uh, once a week, uh, where the DPW on call would come to somebody's house or bypass it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically, if we do it on a garbage day or 
you know, Wednesday or something and say, okay, every Wednesday we'll do it on demand only, right? If somebody calls and says, okay, on Wednesday, I'm going to have a pickup, we'd go and get it. And it would be the same kind of maybe DPW and they pile it in the leaves, all the weeds that the harvester's already getting. Okay. Um, and what about the consolidation of it? Do you think it should be done in a yard bag? Just I, have I, I, I personally throw mine in, in a garbage can. I don't, the yard right. bags are terrible, but I would not even know if we do, is that required? I mean, we don't make people bag their leaves. Um, I guess we have the claw during the fall, but, uh, you know, anything you're picking up and bagging, that gets taken away by uh, the garbage company. They do this have a uh, less positive attitude as to picking up. It is something I agree with. It will probably better be done by the by a village uh, DPW, so it can be thrown into the back of Commerce, uh, the park across from us. That's where they put them, so that yeah. they actually uh, degenerate. I, I would think most people would try and bag them or put them in a garbage to get them across their property anyway. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't know that we should say that that's a requirement. I've done it before and what was what I was able to do once dragging the weeds out, getting them on shore, I let them dry out for a day or two. Mm -hmm. Get a lot lighter to deal with and then I put them in the normal uh, leaf recycling bags or the guard waste stuff. Yeah. Um, but okay. Yeah, picks, I mean, the garbage truck picks them up then, eh, Paul? Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah, they don't know the difference between that and any other guard waste. But um, the thing is, is that unless you get everybody to do it, I it came up in the uh, planning commission as well, was a request to, to start looking at this. And it's like, you know, when I did it work, I my, my area was clean for, gosh, hours. And then after that, this, this stuff just keeps coming from nice. I, so you'd either have to get the whole lake to do it, or I, I don't, I'm not sure what value there is for, you know, a handful of people that are, you know, if, if you live in a part of the lake where that stuff's going to come by because of the current, it's going to come by no matter what you do. So yeah, I think it's kind of the bad luck of the draw because I live in a cove as well and the wind blows in here and this past week I raked a lot of weeds out, threw them in bags and just put them to the curb when the garbage came. So I just dealt with it. Yeah. I think it's every homeowner's issue to deal with really. Yeah. I mean, I think the main complaint A is, I mean, the, the most vocal person that, that's been on, uh, at least on social media, is complaining that the harvesters are the cause. So, oh. uh, you know, that, that they're not running the harvester right and never harvest the weeds it picks up and stuff like this. So they think it's a source problem. Uh, not that, that necessarily that they can't manage it, but maybe that it's becoming unmanageable because of operator error, which I, I disagree with. But uh, I think that's the, the, the sentiment of the vocal. Well, anecdotally, the, I mean, I haven't done any scientific evidence, but I know that it gets worse after a holiday weekend. You had so much boat chop out there and stuff just comes up. It's not, I don't, I don't get big billows of it after the harvester goes through. I get it after a nice long weekend where everybody's enjoyed the lake. Yep. And everybody's pulling up their anchors all, all, all weekend long, pulling up anchors. And pulling weeds with it, so. Well, is there any way we can validate um, the weed harvester and it's, you know, if it's coming off the weed harvester or not, like during or right after operation is something we could do, isn't it? Oh, well, we can video the back weed, end of it. Yeah, I so don't think it's the weed harvester issue. I think it's more the, the boats going by. Yeah, yeah. but, it, but he's, know, he's saying to eliminate. Gonna, there's going to be people that think it is. And I think we if we do something like even in a control, more controlled environment, they come back in this cove where I live and harvest, harvest all these weeds and then see what happens or go to another part of the lake where we think we can control it and see what happens during a weekday when there's not a lot of boat traffic. Uh, that way we can at least report back out to the board or to the council and the public that we've determined it's not the weed harvester. Yeah, and, and I, I, 
I contacted the, when this was all going on, I contacted the, the manufacturer of the harvester just because even when they build the machine, right, it, it's not going to get all of the weeds or right? it's not 100% efficient. They didn't have a, an idea of how much of the weeds it can get, but they basically just said it's completely up to the operator. Uh, and I sent the notes to Grant, right? And Grant, you know, basically said whatever they were recommending, uh, he does, right? Which is basically running the harvester kind of in a skim mode with, where it's not cutting, but it's just collecting cutting. And uh, he basically said he does that. So, you know, I, I think it's some education. People could go on a harvester ride. <laughs> they don't believe it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why we couldn't just, like you said, operate the harvester in the cove for two days and then see if you get a bunch of floating weeds. I think history would prove that we could come up with a, let's say a satisfactory answer on one sweep and then two or three weeks, we would see the complaint coming back again. So, but that's a good idea, Mike. Uh, we can suggest that to uh, Mike Conduct and uh, have Grant go out and do it. Uh, he has been uh, in contact with a harvester operator and he, as you just said, Brian, says he's as careful as he can be. He sweeps uh, without a cut if he sees anything floating. And uh, from here, um, I'll suggest that to Mike Conduct and say that we have solved it. How's that? Well, at least we have a, a modality. Does that make sense to the board? Yes. Okay. As far as having a, a pickup, do we do we think it's uh, you know put it in a bag and let the, the garbage people take it? Is that is that what we're saying, or do we want to see if well, we can I, do something I, else? I think, I think it should. I think the issue is really uh, stack it someplace, let it get dry, and throw it in a bag, and then let the garbage guys pick it up. I think when you when you fill a bag with wet weeds, you're way beyond mm -hmm. forty pound capacity. They're pretty heavy stuff. Yep. So we can get that out as a email or a directive through the through the office. If that again meets with your guys' approval. I think that only makes sense, actually. Paul, you're um, I, wish, I have this tool at my house that that the previous homeowner next door had left here. That's like this amazing thing for getting weeds out of the lake. I can't find it anywhere on the internet. A lot of people are just using rakes. Uh, which mm -hmm. I can imagine would be a nightmare. It's like this aluminum basket thing attached to a, I, guess I should take some pictures, and uh, it's attached to a, like a, a rake handle. And you pull it up and you pull this little handle on it and it folds out and dumps mm -hmm. everything. So you never have to lift anything. You just drag this thing along the top, put it on the dock, pull a button and it flips it out. Mm -hmm. like I, gotta I wish I could find that made somewhere and, and we could recommend people use it, but it's way better than a way better than a rake, that's for sure. We've always used pitchforks, but which is better than a rake, but not quite as good as what you're describing. But on the on the weight side of it, you know, um, I think Paul was talking about this, but if you let them dry a little bit, they lose like 80% of their weight and right. volume. Yeah. It's all water. So if if Unmute, Mike. Yeah, you went back on mute, Mike. Oh, if we go with this kind of solution, I think we also should send out some sort of, even though it may be common sense, but you know, some uh, instructions on you know, let the weeds dry out, then put them in there. Because I'm telling you, I, it's hardly anything left if you let them dry out, and they can stay away from a sprinkler. And that you know, I, you know, sacking up wet bags of wet leaves is not going to solve uh, people that may have physical limitations. Right. So it would even be easier to set them on the shoreline after you bring them up, let them dry off, then bag them and take them out. Something Yeah, that. absolutely. And I think that maybe that should be part of our solution as we put together that some, some sort of recommendation there. Whether people can follow or not, I don't know. But um, I pulled a bunch out this weekend and I'm, I'm sure it wasn't from the harvester and it, it was, it's a great pile. And if it, it would, and now it's started raining, so I can't get them to dry out. But that's part of living on a lake. Really? True. 
Oh, okay. it's part of living on a lake. It's exactly the truth. There you go. Mr. Sergeant Chair, with your approval, I'll get the mic on deck and we'll talk it over and get something going out. How's that? Sounds good to me. You got it. All right. We'll move on to the next. Next, uh, next item on the agenda is Paul's uh, Special Assessment District. Um, Ted is kind enough to walk me through quite a bit of stuff. Ryan uh, uh, sent out some stuff that was extremely helpful as far as me learning about what it takes to uh, get a SAD going. Uh, I sent out just before the meeting, I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at it, this map that Tabitha put together. It indicates not only homes that have connected to the sewers, but sewers that are on SAD, that are on a SAD, that have not yet connected, and homes that would be eligible for a SAD, uh, but they're not on a SAD. There we go. Thanks, Ryan. Um, it looked as though, you know, from my understanding, any, any home that is either on the lake, the riparians, plus anybody that is on the other side of the road would be eligible. That's where we're already set. To, to have people hooked up. Um, what my assumption was until a little while ago was until I looked at this map was that uh, you, you need 30 people to sign up to get the SAD. Um, my thought was that they all had to be in the same area, but apparently that's not the case because I see scattershot hookups. I mean, it looks like Laguna and Laguna Court's pretty well set, but uh, there's bits and pieces all the way around the lake. So all we need to do is get 30 homes uh, that are not on a SAD um, to agree to go that route, and then we can apply. Um, yeah, so, I mean, for, for, and, and these, all the ones that are not highlighted any color just don't have sewer on their street, correct? Correct. And, but that... There's a whole separate petition that could get, or yeah, petition that you can get going. If any of those people want it um, to get sewer put in, that's a whole different kind of thing. But I think for right now, uh, at least for my concern, is trying to make sure as many people as possible get hooked up to sewer as opposed to having septic tanks I lining can't believe the that. lake. I can't believe how many people on Laguna are connected. It's crazy. That's I know. Actually. It all started on Laguna. Oh, yeah. I was actually the first SAD in the village, and that was spearheaded by Mike Stack and uh, two other guys. Um, I think Brian Nedro was in on that also. So okay. the reason okay. council guys that live on Laguna. What's that? The council guys that live on Laguna. <laughs> yeah, they're the council guys that live on Laguna. They were very concerned about it, so they uh, they kicked it out. Uh, they also, uh, you know, back to the question of all of the white, um, there's really two phases, as we all know. Uh, the pink that you're seeing is a lateral phase. That's the street connection. And uh, that was done with an SAD. Um, and everybody on the lake, uh, for the most part, participated in, in that SAD. You only needed 51% for that SAD to get approved, and it was approved. So that put in the lateral lines that run in front of the houses. Uh, I think, uh, Ryan, for you and I, that was $2,100 over 10 years or something. Yeah. Uh, and then in addition to that, and exactly what Paul is saying, and thanks for spearheading it, Paul, is to do a full SAD, which uh, I just went through that last SAD, and it took, I think, 18 months did you check with Tabitha how long it took to open and close the last SAD, Paul? Yeah, she, uh, she said it was like an 18 months to two years yeah. span there to, to make it work. Um, <clears throat> and over that, I did say years. it was work. It's not an easy get. It's not yeah, an, but, but it's an important get. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's about getting people educated on it first. Uh, and like I said, yeah. most people like. First off, most people have no concept of what a SAD is, right? Because why would you if you've never dealt with this before, right? right? So it's getting people to understand what it is, right? The fact that there are the yellow houses, right? Just because you're on the SAD doesn't mean you have to connect immediately, right? Right. Um, right. You, you have, it gives you the option to connect 
whenever your septic tank fails. Now, one thing I don't know, but obviously you'll know, John, uh, when you're on the set and not connected, do you start paying once you're on the set or only after you connect? No, once you're on the set, once you're in the SAD, uh, I think our tax bill went up um, sure. $1,797 or something a year. Yeah, so you're paying, you start paying at that point over 10 years. Correct. Uh, but what, so wh why would you, I guess you're in the situation, so I can ask you directly, why would you join the set and not connect them? Well, at this point in time, uh, with the house going up for sale, it was just a question of uh, discussion as to whether or not we moved into the SAD with uh, the vacant property sitting there, which I'm also in other negotiations on with the village. Uh, and uh, in order to add any hundred square feet either to our house or to build a house on that vacant, we needed to have a sewer hookup. And do remember, those are the two fallbacks too. Uh, yeah. If anybody wants and goes into the village and wants to add 100 square feet or more, uh, they are going to be in a situation if those laterals are running by them. Yeah, they got to connect. They're gonna have to yeah, get they've got to connect. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think the information package we need to put together is basically this map, right? Some of the rules around it, uh, the fact that you join it, if it gets approved, you start paying on your taxes, but you don't have to connect, although I, it's not clear to me why you wouldn't. Um, this type of stuff, the fact, like you said, that if you put 100 square feet on the house, because that's part of the reason why I'm looking at it, right? Um, yeah. Or if, your septic, if your septic fails and you're on these streets, they're not going to give you a, a permit to fix it and you're going to come out of pot. That was my point is, if you're, any of these houses in the, in the orange, right? If your septic yeah. fails tomorrow, you're going to be cutting a check for eighteen thousand dollars, right? Uh, to get to get connected, uh, so it's it's kind of uh, hedge your bet there on saying how long is your septic going to last, and when it does fail, are you prepared to shell out eighteen thousand bucks? If not, you can join this thing and spread it out over ten years, right? Yeah, I do remember yeah. up every year too. Uh, the original SADs were twelve thousand three hundred bucks. Yeah, so that's the part I don't know. So what? So did you get information? Was did they include information on the cost of physically joining it? So like, there, it's not free. It's not tax. It's not a interest-free money. Did we have any of that information? Well, or, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say, yeah, that's that's the financials are are something that I I would really like to get more comfortable with. I don't know that, I mean, when you cut the check yourself for 18 grand, it's 18 grand. Right. My understanding is, is there's additional expenses with a SAD where you've got to pay attorneys and you've got to pay surveyors and other people that, uh, that are associated with it, plus interest on the money that uh, you're essentially being fronted by the government. Well, so even that, though you pay- you know what that amounts to? I mean, this kind of, that's no. kind of here basically saying, right. principal interest and their share of bonding attorney fee will be added, but this is like, a mystery number, right? If we don't exactly. put a number there, people are going to assume it's ten thousand dollars. How much is it? Five hundred, two hundred, a thousand? And I, and I'd like to nail that down. And I would like to. I mean, I, I believe, even though you, if you join a SAD, you're going to have a financial benefit. I, I can't believe a house that uh, has a septic tank um, would. I, I think it would be more attractive to a future homeowner if you were to sell a house if you didn't have a septic tank to deal with. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're right. I think that's part of part of what we need to do is do an outreach that, while honest about the different costs, um, as you say, Ryan, some of the things that are, you don't wanna to have to try to come 1800 bucks out or 18,000 bucks out of pocket uh, if something goes sideways uh, on you. Uh, so this is a way to get it out. The, the the downside and like I said I listed it in that in that post was you know if you do sell your house so John right if you're mm -hmm. on a set or you have the 10 years out on your house and then now you sell your house you got to pay off the rest of that before you sell the house don't you no you're you're sure? I positive yeah I didn't see that either oh, I, I thought that was the case as far as, far as the interest on uh, the sad that last went out and we're on i think it was three and an eighth percent uh as far as cost to carry and as far as uh, attorney fees and bonding fees and etc i believe it ran less than 
uh, let me see, 30 on, I think it was less than uh, $400 per house spread over 10 years. Okay, but you can, yeah. you can sell your house on a set and not have to pay it off the rest? You mean if I sell? Yeah, I, I thought if you were one of these yellow houses and you sold your house, mm -hmm. that 10 year thing is essentially looks like a lien on the house that you have to get rid of, that's not true? Uh, it is a tax lien on the house, but it can be conveyed to the new buyer, or that is to say the debt, in their future tax bills, or you're right, I could negotiate, and I've done that with uh, other lake sales that I've been involved with, uh, where they, in fact, uh, you know, as part of the negotiation, wants the homeowner to pay it off. Okay. But there's you nothing know. saying that the homeowner has to pay it off. It's just a matter of the real estate transaction. That's correct. Yes, exactly. So. All right. Yeah, I thought the homeowner had to pay it off. So that's misinformation on my part. Um, the other thing I'd like to investigate is to try to figure out whether or not there's an economy of scale here. I know we need to have 30 people that say they want to do it. But if we had 60, are those fees minimized? Uh, instead of paying an attorney to do 30, is it the same cost to have them do 60? So I think, I think the answer to that is yes, Paul. Okay. You know, I mean, they're writing docs, they're doing the legals, uh, they're incorporating each and every identified property. It's meets and bounds, parcel numbers, and saying it's part of this sad, uh, the total cost of bringing it into the game uh, is what commerce is gonna charge. And that's a major part of what's going on in here. Commerce is charging for the hookup. Right. in today's dollars and knowing that they have to cover that hookup at any time over the next 10 years or any time in the future. So they have to set aside the can and everything ready uh, as part of their uh, future costs of doing business with anybody that's in the set. Yeah, okay. so, so just for everybody else, right? So I, I we started drawing up some interest. I got like 20, call it 20 people that were at least interested in learning more right uh, which is step zero and and i think once we get those people information and tell them hey talk to your friends like i said just right in this area by me i talked to some of my neighbors here and and they were like oh you know if it comes up let me know i might be interested so i think getting from 20 interested parties you know call it maybe 50 percent of them actually do it maybe 60 percent of them it's 30. I don't think it would be that challenging, especially if we have a map of everybody that would be eligible and we could do some targeted, you know, maybe discussions with people. So, yeah, and I think, you know, uh, to comment and a positive comment uh, to you, I think any of this, and to you too, Ryan, coming from a board member on the water board to a lakefront homer, owner uh, makes a different inflection in the reason you want to get it done. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I, I think... Yeah. Uh, lake owners tend to understand issues like this easier than somebody in all of that white area out there that you're showing on your map, Paul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, I think this is like, uh, I think we should probably, Paul, put together a package of, you know, a couple of things, you know, maybe modify some of the stuff that was sent, try and get some of the money numbers. Tabitha had sent me estimates uh, and I just had uh, the engineer out to give me drawings and stuff. My cost was actually slightly less than the estimates that she that she gave as the standards. Okay. But I think getting the money estimates, understanding what the interest rate potentially ballpark uh, from historical numbers, and what kind of you know costs it would be spread across houses, and then let's get back to this distribution, and we could post some other stuff, see what we can drum up, and then we can maybe ping some of these people who are who are orange houses uh, if we have their contact information or just knock on the door I mean it'd be great if we could get like you know this is a, a big area you know there's a, a, a quite a few houses here over by maybe Mike could drum up some interest in his area mm -hmm. yeah I I think as far as in my head the next steps are going to be things like maybe you and I Ryan can can uh, get a couple other outside off committee interested people uh, maybe not do a subcommittee, but have a couple of meetings with them um, and try to make sure we get something, maybe some sort of a, uh, a piece on the, on the uh, village website that tracks it. And we've got X amount of people signed up. And I don't know if we drum up any interest. I'm, 
I'm trying not to have this tote board Jerry Lewis thing in my head, but yeah, um, something this that tries to... here. This is interesting here that they only went this far down on the street and didn't just do the rest of the street. Because here's here's the lakefront owners, two. Who You're are not showing it on the screen. On the screen. Oh, yeah, sorry. On the screen, it's gone. Yeah, um, really. It's gone. It says I'm sharing. Okay, let's let's do this. Can you see it? There we go. This is interesting because there's actually I know the guy that lives right here, but uh, two houses on the lake that are not shown as being uh, available to connect. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's odd that it looks like it stopped right there at that street yeah. before it moved. For, but then again, there's only one riparian, one riparian lot that is white. No, this actually has about 20 feet of lakefront. I know who lives Oh, that there. one does? Okay. Yeah. All right, so two. Yeah. In interesting. Anyway, yeah. yeah, so I think this is a good step. I think this map is great, right? Yeah. I don't know who, who actually put this together, but this is perfect. And then Tabitha Charlie, did that. Yeah. Tabitha's uh, really done a good job with this so far. Yeah. I am, uh, I'm surprised that there's so, many, so few blue spots on the way. I thought... I'm one of the blue spots, and I thought everybody was on, on, or most everybody was on. I, I it seems to be pretty much 50-50, Except if you take Laguna off, it's like really orange. Yeah. Um, is this an opportunity for us to uh, have a fo focus meeting at some point in the future on this, and you know, put yeah. that out to the public so that we can uh, do some yeah. education here? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, and like I said, I think we should take this. Let's get the information package together, and then try and drum up some more interest. And then, you know, I, I, we could even go like there's swaths of house where you in, in probably an hour you can knock on all those doors, and that could be ten people. And you get the guy in the middle where he talks to his neighbors. Everybody's interested. You could probably target some areas where there's quite a few people in a row not connected, all back over here, for example. <laughs> Maybe you can get right. something going. The guy, the guy in between. The two blue spots up here on Tampa, uh, he is an anti-sewer big time. So he's doing everything he can to keep his sewer functioning. So we're going to run into that. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's fine. I mean, there are people, uh, I literally, when I made the post, I said, if you're interested, let me know. And everybody's like, no, thank you. I love my sewer. It's like, this post is not for you then. Right? I, didn't ask, I didn't ask if you were not interested. I asked if you were interested. So, so uh, um how does this fit into uh, the purview of the Lake Board? Which was one of the things that we did as one of the three to five year goals of yeah. the board was trying to get more people connected to the sewer and Paul yeah. Sanders assigned to that task. So yeah. that's, to, that's to increase uh, or to uh, protect, for lack of a better term, uh, lake quality? Exactly. It was uh, that and, and more more testing of the water um, was a piece of that. All right. Well, so it sounds like you uh, you guys got a plan going forward. We do. And so uh, we'll look forward to hearing what you uh, um, come up with as or. Um, all right, so that's B. Uh, C, Mike, non uh, non sanctioned fishing tournaments. Can you guys see this? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, this is a pop up that was in the uh, public uh, in the in the launch area this week. Um. I'm not sure how this is um, fair to the people on the on the lake. Um, I'm not. I, I really didn't like. It doesn't seem like we have any control here, or am I just being overly control freakish here? Because you know we put we put fish in this lake, and people are coming in here without any kind of notification to the village and taking fish out, or at least enjoying the fish that are in there. Um, this pop-up, I mean, is there a permit needed for this? Um, if we're stocking the lake, do we have any kind of rights here? Um, 
Well, I uh, I did ask a question. Yeah. Uh, um, Mike uh, Smith had left, and uh, I believe it was Tabitha who responded. What uh, seemed to think I was talking about the the fishing tournament that's been on going on for years, um, and I did not get back with her and straighten it out because I wasn't completely sure what exactly was going on. But this not not the picture makes sense. I, I, straightens it out in my mind what's going on. I, it seems to me that if we're stocking the lake and they're making money off of this, um, we ought to at bare minimum be infor informed about it, if not uh, have some sort of fee to do that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not anti-fisherman and I'm not- Not I'm me either. People, they can't fish our lake, but I think it, you know, you know, it's our, you know, we have some rights here on the lake. We, we have to maintain the lake. We're all here sitting here worried about the health of our lake and everything else. So this seems to be like an uncontrolled input to our lake. And it, it would seem to me that we have some sort of rights and it being at least informed on when this is going on. Um, so as a bare minimum, that's my yeah. opinion on it. Mike, did you, uh, did you uh, look up what Cash for Bass uh, stands for? Oh, I didn't look it up, John. I just okay. There's a, there's a bait shop there that that's not our that's not even our bait shop. No. Um, so. Well, uh, well, uh, real quick, like we've got a lot, we've got we've got to get a permit for everything around here. Um, I can't imagine why somebody could put a pop up in that area and not have to require a permit. Well, we do require that any. Uh, official tournament that's run on the lake, whether it be for bass or whatever. And I might say, I don't know of any other tournament. Uh, I think there are three, maybe five that are run a year uh, for any other fish than bass. Uh, and of course, we don't stock bass. Uh, bass is a natural uh, ingredient into this lake. The other thing is it's supposed to be uh, catch and release. Um, I can tell you this wasn't because well, I was down by the dock when they were pulling the boats out. <laughs> well, and, and as I said, it's supposed to be. Uh, so the combination of they're supposed to register and the combination of they're supposed to be catch and release needs to be clarified. So that goes down to the village. So what, uh, what, what, what is the requirement that they're supposed to uh, tell us? Is it like a legal thing? Is it like a law in place? And if they don't do it, there's a repercussions or it's just the village thinks it would be great? I, if they I, did. Uh, uh, Ryan, I think I've never run a tournament, but I think uh, the way I understand it is more of a uh, gentleman, gentlewoman agreement between those that are operating these, that they do come into the village for policing purposes, for parking purposes, to say that they're gonna run uh, some kind of tournament through, and I'm gonna underscore, the DNR owned public launch. And I don't want to overemphasize or underemphasize that. Uh, it ain't our lake. We do take care of it. We have complained to the DNR uh, about the fact uh, that we're a lake that spends $2,500 a year, as you know, it comes through our board uh, to stock uh, fish. Um, some of the response was, well, you're stocking walleye and they're not native to your lake and you know they don't reproduce. So you're doing it only for the enjoyment of those that come in the lake as well as the residents. So if you want to do that, go ahead. You need a permit to stock, we'll give you the permit you want to pay the money, throw the fish in. Uh, they do come in uh, upon request and do the necessary uh, shock, catch, uh, seine netting, and et cetera, to do fish counts. It's supposed to be every 15 years. We've actually had them come in on much shorter periods upon request. Uh, the DNR fisheries uh, uh, group is out of uh, Waterford, Michigan. So um, that's handy. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. I understand your concern, Mike. I mean, uh, we put pike in, the pike get caught, they go out, right? 
Uh, we have the fishing terminal, which uh, Phil Peters and I started, what, 28 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. Uh, we ran it in, uh, in, in conjunction with uh, the Park and Rex Department. And then the Park and Rex Department took it over because we decided to give away all of the prizes uh, to get more people to come to the corn roast at the uh, corn roast. And of course, members of the Park and Rex are the ones that go out and pull together all of the um, prizes. So those all come from public donations, including our local uh, bait shop. That's just a little of the history, if it matters or not, but uh, I, I think it would be worth everybody's while to find out specifically if there's a rule that they need to register either with us or the DNR. Uh, and uh, what do we do if it's a bass tournament and it's a catch and release and nobody's releasing them, you know? Part of the thing well, that I can remember vividly are it's all of the issues we had in the first five years of putting that fishing tournament together. There was one particular gentleman who would come down and talk about how kids were catching bass that was illegal. I had to keep reminding them that it was catch and release and uh, anything less than uh, six inches or seven inches, we sort of set that uh, parameter, couldn't even be brought to the shore to be measured. But, you know, what do you tell a five-year-old? Eh, you're in a fishing contest, but we're not going to measure your fish. So. Well, I, Might have been my I, just did a, talking about. I just did a quick Google on uh, cash for bass. Uh, this is a uh, well-run, this is not just some fly-by-night, bunch of good old boys got together and, uh, to catch some fish. No, it's a tournament. A well organized event. They have a uh, league, like almost like league nights uh, every weeknight Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, plus, there's a couple other tournaments, Monster Quest, some other things. So, this isn't, this is obviously a well organized, uh, and they have standings. I was looking at the, uh, I believe it was on the 15th, according to this, that they came into Wolverine Lake. Um, and they, it looks like they took out about 50 fish somewhere in that neighborhood, um, totaling about, if I were to make a rough guess, about 50 pounds of uh, bass. And they were removed from the lake? Um. I haven't found that yet, but uh, in the standings, it says um, number of fish. Then the next column says alive. And then all of the alive are zero. So I'm assuming that uh, yeah, they took them. So, um, so th this is making a substantial Mike, impact on our yeah. lake. Mike, the picture I took was taken on August 26th. So they must have, maybe they have one. Oh, they might have come back through, hold on. I didn't go down far enough. Uh, they no, don't... They're here once a week. Yeah, no, it's, they were here June 19th. Uh, and I'm still looking. That's possible. I'm looking at the calendars. I'm just on the, uh, I'm only on the Wednesday ones right now. So uh... I'm on the full calendar here. I'll show you. I, I can show oh, you. they have a full calendar? I didn't see Oh, it. yeah. Here we go. I'll pull it up. So here's, here's, here's the cash for bass. So coming down here, they were Wolverine here, which was in June. Uh, let's see Wolverine on this one. Wolverine here, July 15th. August, what date did you say you saw it? It was 26th. August 26th, Wolverine. So they've been coming at least once a month all summer. Yeah, if they're pulling fish, the fish out every time. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think this is the only guys on. coming in here either. No, it's not. And like I said, they were definitely taking fish out because I, I was at the launch when they were coming out of the out of the lake and there was people with fishing bags. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Now what? 
does it say anything on there uh, about uh, when this uh, when their tournaments end? I would assume it's probably Labor Day. Last one's on the calendar is you know there there is late as September twenty sixth, but it looks like oh it, all right okay it looks like it drops a lot in September to basically just weekends. Yeah, we need to uh, look into this because uh, they're they're kind of clearing us out, and we're and we're putting twenty five hundred bucks in every year. Like, granted, we're not uh, stocking bass, but it's going to get the fish that the bass eat fish on. out. If they're going to pull that much fish out, we're not going to have any bass in here. We we'll have to start to stock. So, um, I, I guess my my same question as earlier: if there's not a rule that says they're not allowed to, or a law that says they must inform us, I mean, anything we're going to do is just say nice to have, and with no no penalty otherwise, it's not enforceable, right? So, making a rule that's not enforceable is, doesn't even make any sense, right? I'm not exactly sure how to go. Uh, what, who do we ask to find out whether this is a uh, something we can do or not? Can we make a rule? You mean require that they register? I'm sorry. Is that what, what the point was, Guy? Yeah. I think Ryan, you know, Ryan's got a good point. What are the current rules? Are there any rules? Well, this I is, know I, that's this what is I a phenomenon to. that's come on because of the internet, and um, I'm not sure if the laws have kept up with it. But I know that the I think there's more than one internet fishing tournament going on in our lake. I think you're absolutely right. I don't know if it's for species, but I think there's more than one tournament for bass going on. That's for sure. Um, it, the DNR website says all the fishing tournaments have to be registered with them, but it doesn't say anything on whether or not they have to let the municipality know or nothing I could find yet. So they may be registered through the DNR for this. I don't know our situation. What do you mean by our situation? Being that like it's a DNR lake, even though we stock the fish in it. You know what I mean? Like the DNR, like yeah. I'm assuming, because it's their launch site, they're allowed to give that permit out. It's not a private lake. That that's a that's a valid point, right? Right. So, if these fishing tournaments are you know legally going through the DNR, getting their permits, right? I mean, I I don't know then if our municipality, you know, our council, has some contact with the DNR in terms of, hey, can you let us know? You know what I mean? They probably won't even bother. That's my guess, right? I just pulled uh, up the D I just pulled up the DNR uh, website. Hold on. So this is, is the- uh, Is this something that maybe we should uh, be- these, these are the registered tournaments on our lake from June of this year until uh, I just searched to today. Right, so here's cash for bass, cash for bass, cash for bass. So they registered four times, uh, and then here's two others: Wonderland Marine and Topwater Huron. That's all registered for our lake this year. So we've had six. This is bass only. You can search by fish. So this is six bass tournaments on our lake this summer. Registered. This sounds like something. Uh, just tell me what you think that maybe we need to consult a lawyer and see what we can do about it. If anything, you mean restrict the terminants or restrict them from taking fish out of the lake once caught. In other words, only catch and release should be the rule. Is that just so I understand what you're trying to do? I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking more generally than that. I'm just thinking, can we make, um, rules to have tournaments on our lakes. If you want to have a tournament, you need to inform us, you need to do catch and release, that kind of stuff. I mean, can we even do that? Well, you know, again, uh, I'm with everybody, we should be able to control it, but I think I've had enough experience with the Eagle DQ DNR 
that your ability to do that on a public lake is uh, less than zero. Uh, I would think on the other side, we could probably have a good solid conversation. Uh, and the easiest place to have that conversation is the Proud Lake DNR uh, office. I mean, it's uh, Proud Lake's DNR office right up the road here is the one that's in charge of our lake. They're the ones that control uh, or supposedly control the uh, manning of that house there right so uh, this is this is some some information right so just yeah this basically says you have to have to register right but it doesn't register it does not guarantee the launch access to the launch is first come first serve mm -hmm. so they still have to abide by which they definitely were not right uh it, so it, let's just see what this says. The tournament is registered to launch and there's no parking. It's not a reservation system. Tournaments are required to be registered, but registration does not guarantee the launch. Access to the launch is first come, first serve. So the only knob we have, I think, which, which was clear is that there was way too many people parked. This last tournament, for example, when I was over at the boat launch, like there were people parked on the grass, two people per spot. I think it was it was way over parked. So that could be an enforcement thing where it's more more boats on the lake than what's supposed to be. But yeah. it seems like they have to register. Uh, and maybe if they're not registered, you can do something. But it looks like, you know, there's more research to be done here. But there it looks like it's 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 controlled through the DNR and you register. I'm trying to see if you can take fish or not. Yeah, I don't see it as far as whether it's a rule that they uh, only can do catch and release. On, on parking, it is a 11-slot uh, a uh, sized parking lot. In theory, uh, we have the ability to enforce the parking of any car with a trailer that's empty on any public street. We can ticket them. So, you know, it used to be that when that lot was full, they would come out of the DNR after they launched the boat and you'd find them parking on streets. Uh, I don't think anybody really sees that anymore. I don't know if any of you guys and gals have seen uh, trailers and cars empty sitting on the street side uh, at all, but... Uh, on Glengarry? What's that? On Glengarry? Uh, well, I'll tell you where they sometimes used to go. They used to uh, empty the, uh, throw the boat off, and then uh, when there was no parking, uh, they would uh, move across to the uh, Commerce Park across the street at Park. But the sheriffs used to take care of that. So, uh, John, I think that night there were actually people parked up in the village property with empty boat trailers. Yeah, you mean, uh, yeah, beyond the fence line, right? Yeah, we, I mean, we got a lot of space up there. Yeah. So it sounds like we need to do two things. One is uh, find out uh, what the information requirement is that gets passed along to the village itself, just from a policing standpoint, and see if we can restrict the parking down to 11 only. Uh, I suppose that you know, you'll find a lot of cars coming in with 55 people per car trying to go beyond that rule, but you would be down to 11 boats theoretically. And um, what else uh, should go to, I, and I'm not sure this goes to council. I really think this needs to go to the administrator as a first run question. Yeah, but, I mean, I, th I uh, think we, we should put we it should on. I mean, right here it says all all tournaments need to be registered, right? Yeah. So we, we should be looking at, as a board, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we should be looking in the beginning of the summer and throughout the summer each month reviewing what tournaments are being registered right it's the information is available now it's on us to go understand it certainly mm -hmm. if we see a fishing tournament in place that is not registered then i'd imagine we have access to call the dnr and let them know there's an unregistered fishing tournament on the lake and then on the dates where the fishing tournaments are posted and registered just enforce the number of boats that are there based on mm -hmm. what's already allowed to be and if they stay within the rules, then they get to do whatever, what they want. It's just making sure that we're aware and they enforce it. And the, it sounds like the number of tournaments, we're not going to have any control over that. But enforcing the rules of the lake while the tournament is active, certainly we can do. 
That would probably act as a disincentive also to, to use our lake if we're out there ticketing the 12th to 53rd boat um, using the ramp. That would probably not prompt them to really want to have another tournament on our lake. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not... I'm not going to sit here and say I'm against tournaments on the lake. No, I'm not either. We I just that we should discourage the tournaments on the lake, but we should understand when they are and make sure that they're they're not putting 50 boats on the lake. Well, I think Ryan, your your idea about checking in in the beginning of the spring or summer and see what's registered, and then you know, several of us live on the lake, and I mean, it's pretty obvious when there's a fishing tournament going on, we can we can balance it against us. So I think the most uh, the most important thing is we capture this as an action for the spring. Yep. And then uh, we should probably add it to the under recreation here, fishing, fishing habits, fish contest. Look at this. We already have somebody assigned for that role. Yeah, I figured it was me. <laughs> the guy who came in with a fish binder or whatever that was. Fish, fish bag. bag. Fish bag. fish bag. Well, fish bag, big fish, yeah. Mike Sargent. Uh, query that DNR website every now and then. Yeah, if you could send me that link, uh, I'll do that. I'll, yep. I'll, uh, I'll bookmark it. Yep, yep, will do. Okay. I don't see the name of the uh, uh, DNR uh a uh, guy that's running the Proud Lake Recreation Center, but here's his phone number. Maybe the thing to do is just get a hold of him and invite him to a board meeting. It's actually a her, or used to be, and just have a face-on-face, -face, get these questions answered. Anybody think that's a good idea? That's a great idea, especially when we're doing this virtually and as efficient as we are getting these things started up. <laughs> <laughs> but this that'd be great that way they can just dial in from the house and not there have to travel on over i think yeah. I've, I've been thinking about that for other purposes as well i think we can take advantage of these virtual meetings yeah um and and if you can't tell based on the fact that i've, I've screen shared six times in this meeting i'm all about having some more technology at our water management board meetings because well, that's another that's another kettle of fish once we go back to the board and once we go back to going into the village it would be great to be have this kind of capability during our meetings so yeah. that we could have people you know experts so we can have it partially a working meeting as well <laughs> yeah go we'll do some research live while we're doing it check check, yeah. check in with some stuff yeah I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, if we I'm can get there. the uh, internet down in the meeting room so yeah, it, it works. We we got it. And I've never got I've got the password and everything. I just it never holds on. But yeah. that, that's a story to be fixed later. So uh anything more about the non-sanctioned fishing tournaments? They are sanctioned, in fact. Not by Wolverine Lake. Uh, not by Wolverine Lake, but we don't get to sanction them. I kind of like to find out if we can. To be honest with you, um, just for or just for resource management purposes. Sure. Um, because we get twenty bass tournaments coming in every year. We're, I mean, it's going to be a dead lake. Um. All right, so let's move on to nine uh, D, which is the transponders. Hey, I just wanted to bring this back up because I thought, you know, and John, I think he even brought it up somewhere. We sent it up to, to council and somehow it died. Well, it, it, it died. I've been at council. I requested it be considered and it's died three times in the last four years. Um, there is a certain faction within council, but I, I might say there's a little shift that's going on, and I'll tell you what the power center is on that. That doesn't think there's any reason, since we have Andy, uh, that we need to have any reporting uh, other than Andy. I think I was pretty curt about the way I feel about that. Uh, <laughs> in my yeah, last you were clear. Uh, you know, the... the Actually, Mike Powell thinks it's a good idea. 
Uh, as he said, it's an engineer's dream to be able to drive by something with a Bluetooth uh, transponder, in, uh, transponder and find out uh, exactly how deep, how cold, what the turbidity uh, and et cetera are of the lake. Uh, you know, the board once was talking about m monitoring temperature so we'd have a better range of control over uh, releasing water uh, going into the fall so that we could have more water or a longer season. And uh, when ice off uh, could be better measured. So there are people who are in favor of it. Well, John, uh, um, with what happened up in Midland, I would think that this might have a little bit more priority now. How, yeah. how much are these things again? Frank Luz, but we're sitting, we're sitting five inches, maybe five inches over. We're not sure because we don't have a transponder, but I mean, what happens if that's 12 inches? What happens if we start losing our dam? Brian, the, the answer to your question is about, uh, I think uh, in John's thing it was $3,000. But so we didn't have the budget. We we didn't have no, the budget on the water it's board? It's budgeted. That's what I don't understand. It's, it's, it's budgeted. We're within budget. It's our recommendation. Um, I know that they're, you know, so what are we, what are we here for? Let's let's do it again. I have no problem carrying this forward. I, I, I the, this time I'll do it probably in a more professional fan, uh, uh, way. I will uh, be kind, uh, but at the same point in time, uh, I think it will fall uh, well under water quality, and uh, we do have funds. And who wants to make the motion? As you know, I always defer to the board. Uh I'll make the motion. Okay. That we, I, I make the motion. We just buy the bloody things. Okay. That that isn't the official motion, by the way. But uh, oh, bloody things. Okay. Uh, well, make the motion I, that we uh, purchase two uh, transponders to monitor lake level. No. Yeah. I second the motion that we buy the bloody things. <laughs> <laughs> and have them installed, right? And have them installed. No, just buy them and throw them in the lake. Throw the bloody things in the lake. Right? Yeah. Then we can be a bloody lake. Yeah. Uh, now, where, where do you want them installed? There's theoretically three measurement bars, uh, two, one at the dam and two at other places, still somewhat unknown. Um, you know, some of the things Mike Powell talked about, if you could know how much uh, water flow is coming in through the greenaway, that might be of some help. I mean, there's all these things, but <clears throat> do you want to start with one at the dam? I, I you know, one at the dam, one at the greenaway, and one at uh, down in uh, the other the end. Boardwalk. The boardwalk. The boardwalk. Boardwalk. But in the three corners, you got a T. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. estimated cost not to exceed $10,000. Do we have that somewhere in the budget? Well, we haven't spent anything on the... Uh, we haven't spent anything on anything, have we? Well, yeah, on erosion. So we got twenty-five grand sitting there, don't we? Uh, that's correct. It's theoretically specified to do different. Uh, to, we're going to spend uh, five thousand of that tonight, I would hope, uh, uh, to hire Paul. Uh, but you know, theoretically, it's on erosion and on the canal. Well, lake lake level is directly related to. Uh, how fast your beaches are eroding. So we need to know. Yeah, I don't agree. I think that's why we should be doing it more than one spot at the dam, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, I think it should be three. Um, the uh, and and we can we can purchase it through the money uh, that we directed towards erosion because uh, it doesn't sound like much is going to work go forward on that at this time. Right um because we're still kind of trying to figure out where to do it mm -hmm. so we, we know where we that money and just buy the transponders and we can just go right around the uh the faction yeah well um so we're putting together a motion that the board recommends that council approve the expenditure uh an expenditure not to uh, exceed ten thousand dollars how's that the installation of three transponder systems to measure uh, depth, 
temperature and turbidity, because that's that all seems to come together with a three thousand dollar package, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Uh, uh, sites to be determined, but to include the dam as site one. Now we can say to be determined by uh, the company that is going to put the in the. Uh, the transponders in and in coordination with Mike Powell's wishes. I don't know how you want to word it. I'm just throwing it out there. I didn't make that as a pure motion. Somebody else can repeat it. Where's Sherry? Sherry, repeat it, would you? <laughs> I, if you guys agree with it, I don't know. You know. It, well, Trump budgeted. At this funds. point, let's. Uh, cool. um, um, should we put it out as an R or? RFQ. Well, yeah, sure. There's two um, to do it as far as I know, you know. You yeah, uh, well, as far as you know, so there might be somewhere uh, someone else out there that can do it. Mm -hmm. um, John is the uh, Mike Powell's routinely at the council meetings, right? Correct. I mean, if you alerted to him that this is coming up again, maybe he could support you a little bit. John, explain to me again why we would have to go through council. So if we have the $25,000 uh, that has been already been approved by council to spend on erosion control, and this could fall under erosion control, why would we need to go through council again? Well, um, it's, quite, where it's going to go. We had well solved uh, until Mr. Smith left because we pushed through the administrative committees that any budgeted item could be put on the consent agenda. Yeah. So uh, we can make that part of the motion that the board wants to add to the consent agenda, the approval for the purchase of three transponder equipment uh, uh, under uh, or three pieces or three locations, make it much shorter than I'm rambling on, uh, uh, but under budgeted funds, under the consent agenda and go from there see if we can push it through consent it'll get taken off anyways we have two guys that watch the consent agenda and uh you know take anything off that says waterboard on so let's do it that way so who wants to make that motion let's throw it out there <clears throat> so explain to me why we why we have to go through the consent yep. agenda uh, mike the bylaws say that uh the water board or any of the members cannot may uh, not incur any expense uh, obligation or liability upon the village unless specified specifically authorized by the village council. So we can't go spend money until we get on this list. And John's saying there's ways that that list can be blocked. But I think we need to keep pounding on it because I, I, I think that this is uh, yeah. This is a big. This is a part of our lake health uh, and our long-term lake health and, and lake management. And I don't. I think we need to keep asking for it until we get it. Yeah, I agree with you. Can we just put on the uh, consent agenda erosion control devices? So nobody knows what that exactly what that is. <laughs> they can't pull it off. We might have to call it, call it duck and chicken. That's a good idea. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I don't like I don't like those kind of games being played here. But uh, maybe where we have to go. Yeah, uh, I'll make a motion to put it on the consent agenda just to watch it get jerked off again. But then we can make a next our next move after that. Well, you know, to have somebody jerk it off the consent agenda is going to be normal. That's not a problem. I mean, you, you, if you've ever watched Counselor, you know that there are a large number of items that go through consent agendas. Uh, what, you got $140,000 a month in, uh, in expenditures that go through consent. Uh, the theory being is that every councilman has looked at the list of budgeted and uh, expended items for the month. So, uh, what we'll do is, do we have an official motion? Do we have a second to the motion? And then as we go into that, uh, uh, I go into the pre-agenda construction on Friday, I will talk to Mike Conduct and said, look at this budget funds, 
we are going to purchase, what did you say, Mike Sargent, something for erosion control? Ro erosion control devices. <laughs> or formerly called transponders. Uh, and uh, you put that on there? Yeah, and since our budget <laughs> funds, we are going, at, or I, I'm going to have, I'm going to ask him to have them specifically put on the consent agenda. And we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, 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 we just, a second for that? Second. All right. All those in favor on that? Aye. 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 All right. It's Sherry, if you guys want to have. You want to have a roll call vote since it's money? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nye. Yes. yes. Martini. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kurt? Snyder. Yes. Scott. Yes. Duff. Yes. Sergeant. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You know, I'm just laughing at this, uh, like all of us are, because this is, uh, sure, you can use the word, Scott said it's asinine, uh, but uh, as you know, we're about ready. We just got the parking lot done on the, uh, the Veterans Committee, uh, so that veterans uh, group raised something in excess of $67,000 to build that. There isn't a dime's worth of, of money going in to build that uh, memorial. It's through the hard driving work of four guys. I mean, four, well, particularly one young lady who's on the subcommittee. And at our last council meeting, one of those two gentlemen who sits across from each other turned to uh, the chair of Park and Rex and, and, and said in point blank, why are you shutting down raising the brick uh, pledges? Uh, you should be doing this and not doing what you're doing. Um, this is a gentleman who has never been on any committee. This is a gentleman who has never been at anything. And, uh, and yet that's the kind of people that you need to get off of council. Uh, the village is putting money and they're extending the parking lot, but uh, we have one uh, member of that board whose father wrote a check for $20,000 to get us over the nut so we can buy all of the flagpoles. Man. And, and you've got uh, people on council, quote, trying to watch taxpayers' money, even though it's not taxpayers' money. You know, so... That's the end of my frustration, just to say I can see how it's going to go, but I thank God for putting it on there, guys, and I'll see what I can do to get this through consent agenda. Yep. And then I'll argue our purpose again. Yeah, go, go, go down in a ball of flames on your last term here. Okay, you know, I've had my ass singed a few times. It's okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, so um, let's move on to 9E, which is the In the Lake virtual conference oh yeah all right um yeah guys i put this i put this let me share my screen here um i don't know if you had a chance to look at the, the website i assume you can see this um oh wait a minute you can't see it yet can you see it now there you go all right, so this is this looks like a pretty decent opportunity for us to participate and not have to uh, really take too much time away from work and or expenses to get back and forth somewhere. But there's a long list of things on that on the agenda on their agenda. Uh, I've listed them here. All of these uh, these are the ones that I think are specifically on point for us. Um, I think is a great opportunity for us to. Uh, Get a little education, also get a little some ideas about um, where we want to, you know, where we might want to leverage this in the future. Um, I know, you know, my next thing to look at in my mind, at least what I'd like to work on, is watersheds, um, and that all that you know, what what's what's the watershed doing to our lake? Um, but there's a lot of things going on here, including you know, Brian. Uh, Ryan's favorite social media, mass media and communications, which 
is now becoming a thing, which I think is interesting. I think we could learn something from that as well. Um, but anyway, um, I recommend, I would like to ask that uh, some, if not all of us participate in this. I also understand, I've been, I've been told that they will be available by video if you are registered and can't make it. So at the allotted time, so they'll be there for, for people to review. Uh, but I think before when I went, I, I had to request that the village uh, authorize this. So I'm throwing it out there that I'd like to I'd like to participate. I hope that some other folks like to participate as well, and then do whatever we have to do through the village to get the. It's a whopping thirty dollars. Not that that's going to kill me, but you know, have them uh, pay for that for the entry fee. Are are there dates, Mike? I'm sorry. I yeah, um, there are. And um, let me see if I can find all my paperwork here. I think it was like on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, September 16th, okay. 17th and 18th. Registration is uh, closes on the 11th. Um, it starts, you know, basically it starts at, at noon on the, uh, the welcome. No, it actually starts at 9 a.m. on uh, Wednesday and it goes through Friday, I think lunch. No, I, I know for sure I can't. I can't swim this on those dates. The 16th and 17th for me is. Like Understand? I just you know, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, these workshops that go in parallel, uh, and obviously I can't be on all of them, but uh, there's several on there that are very interesting and in, and in, um, for us. So I don't know what how you guys feel. I I, I want to. I'd, I'd like to participate in, I would suggest, I, I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, registration site and uh, at least with you, Mike, I will try to coordinate so that we don't all take the same things. There's okay. stuff that fits right into my wheelhouse with what I'm trying to do with water quality. So, Okay, there's a lot of water quality stuff on here. Yep. So you, I don't see anything on my calendar that's going to stop me, so. Well, I'm I'm uh, taking my uh, qualifying exams next week, uh, so I don't know what kind of mental state I'll be in in the 16th, 17th, and 18th. I may be in a corner drooling. That, that's understandable. So, um, so I'll 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 let you know where I'm at with that. Hey, Mike Hurst, if you attend and we can get the copy of the presentations, I'd like to, and we can pass them around. That'd be nice. I would like to review all of them. Sure. We'll see if we can do that. I can't that attend because well. I have this job, but. Yeah. Jobs. Yeah, I know. So, well, okay. Okay, so let, let's stay in contact about that and who's going to be where and, and, and can attend or not. So, right, so my, my question is, uh, how do we submit for the fees or do we just pay them and send in an expense account? I mean, like I did before, I, do, do I need that's what we've done do we need approval from somebody? Um, I think, you, I think you pay and then you get reimbursed, uh, but you have to get approval through uh, the village council. John, you can. Yeah, it's a motion for uh, expending budgeted funds under training and classes. I think we have a category there. Didn't we increase that up to uh, 275 bucks when we were going to go up uh, and, and have to do it in person? Right. So, yeah, just uh, let's make it. Uh, we have the funds in the budget. Yeah. Um, if I need to make a motion for, for, to uh, John to carry to council that uh, we uh, approve th th up to three attendees at this is thirty dollars a piece to yeah. the in Inland Lakes conference. Yeah, I, um, I'll second that. Uh, Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, I'll second that motion. Do we uh, 
so we need to put it to a vote. All those, all those in favors of, of the motion for up to three people going to Inland Lakes. Uh, Do we need a roll call again because it's money? Yes. Yes. Yes, we would. When you game fall. All right. Nye. Yes. Martini. Yes. Hurst. Yes. Snyder. Yes. Scott. Yes. Duff. Yes. Sergeant. Yes. All right, so um, that can, uh, let's move on to F. And John, you had something else. I didn't quite catch it to write it down. You have one other thing you wanted to talk about? Well, I think I heard uh, Catherine rightly say it has something to do with the canals and we have that on the agenda as an, as an ongoing item, right? Uh, this, this is nothing more than uh, going to council but asking uh, or not making a motion from budgeted funds to uh, hire um, Paul for an amount of what to be 5,000, no, well, $2,500 uh, upon the initiation of the work study for uh, uh, studying the low, uh, uh, Wolverine Lake uh, Canal System and the improvements and alternatives uh, that will be recommended to, uh, to that system. Did you read that, uh, Catherine? Does that sort of mean most of what you uh, have been looking for? Uh, he's talking about the feasibility of alternative, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Identifying permits, uh, preparing a written report of uh, study, uh, and to meet with us to uh, uh, discuss that report. Jesus. Yes, I mean, we're talking about possibilities for, um, like um, aeration or water flow or things to, to help improve the canals. Correct. Okay, just making sure. I'm yeah. sorry, I got a little background noise here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, has everybody has everybody seen the, the letter that came from from Paul? Should we flash it up? I don't know that everybody saw. Can you flash it up, Ryan? I mean, I, I could try, but I'm just, to be honest with you, I'm having a hard time getting into the place. <clears throat> There you go. This this is basically what they said. They said five thousand bucks, twenty five hundred up front, twenty five hundred. But this is these are the the points relative to the canal system, right? All right. What alternatives we have? Assess conditions. Evaluate the current conditions. Feasibility of alternatives. Uh, probable cost estimate. Per, identify the permits a written report and, and meet uh, to discuss the findings. Where the canals built? What's when, that? When were the canals built? Because uh, number one says uh, area prior to the construction of the canals, which implies that they came in after the lake was made. Correct. Um, I believe uh, well, uh, they actually were part of a creation of uh, some of the platting that went on to create the neighborhood back in there. I don't want to give the full history, but hell, uh, excuse me, heck, let's have Paul bring it forward. That's what he's just agreed to do, right? Yeah, and we go in here on the, the property gateway. I bet you they have some old uh, old aerial images from yeah, way back when. Far, but... Um, well, I don't know how far back. It goes back to 1940. Okay. So there you I, would, go. I would go ahead and say that in 1940, the canals weren't there. Yeah. Right. This is all over. There looks to be the rum line. By, 19, by 1974, they were. Yeah. So somewhere between 1940 and 1963, they got dug. Right? Right. So. Well, hmm. You know what it must have been? It must have been a farmer's ditch. Is that what I see running up there? Yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, that yeah. looks like where the canals uh, ended up. Um, looks like a wetlands more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, they're not natural. It's not part of the lake. No. So. You know, and back here, it's interesting, too. If, you, if you've ever looked in this area, it's changed quite a bit. 
since then. This whole, you know, IE canal. <laughs> there you go. This, this is all previous as well, right? Yeah. So when there's not water flow in some of these places, they were they they were dug out. It wasn't part of the original lake. It's nineteen. Go back to that forty shot, just out of curiosity. Um, this is forty, but the bridge is already there. Yeah, the bridge is there. That's the old bridge, though. We have yeah. a picture of that bridge. Yep. Um, yeah, this uh, it had been filled by the, well, of course, it was filled in what, 20, 28, I think, is when it was finally uh, completed. Yeah. And it was, well, yeah, but between 40 and 63, pretty drastic difference on this lake, right? Oh, yeah. Just a few more houses, eh, guy? A, a, a couple more houses, right? <laughs> it went from farms to there's a laguna. Yeah. Right? Pretty drastic. So we ended up with uh, being the uh, detention pond for 5,000 acres, I think is uh, back to Paul's uh, question. How much, uh, uh, how many uh, acres feed us? And I think that's what I last heard. We're now up, uh, rooftops are so heavy, we're covering about 5,000 acres from all points. Anyway, so this is this is the letter. So I, I think this is reason why I think, I mean, not that we, I, I don't think we need to go out and get a bunch of quotes to get proposals getting getting our current onboard company to do it for five thousand bucks seems reasonable to me. Yeah. So so we've got a motion on the table, right? We have a motion? I, I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> I don't I don't remember hearing one. Well somebody throw a motion on the table if you don't mind. Kathy? Okay. Um motion to oh I forgot the words. To um, have Progressive A and E do a study on the canals. That works per their uh, their per uh, August twenty sixth letter, and I'll include that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. per their their letter slash quote, whatever. Mm -hmm. We do, and we have a budget for research stuff. Is that true? Yeah, we have twelve thousand five sitting aside there. Yeah. Okay. So support. Better. I'll second the motion. Almost, so we have a movement and a motion and a second. Yes. Yep. So we need a roll call. Yes. All right. Nye. Yes. Martini. Yes. Hurst. Snyder. Yes. Scott. Yes. Stuff? Yes. Sergeant? Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the actual uh, agenda now. Oh. Yeah, pump, pumpkin time's coming quick, so we got to fly through this. Yeah. <laughs> I, All I, right. literally, I literally haven't seen my kid today. That's why she came in here crying. Um, 10, uh, so that, that finishes everything I had under nine. So 10, um, is our continuing, uh, harvester discussion. We kind of covered before we want to do anything with Lakeshore, yeah. Mike. You're muted, Mike. Thanks. Somebody's got to keep me straight. Let me <laughs> share this again. Guys, I don't know why we're not doing something here. This, this is this, this. The road's going to be in the lake. I, I'm really don't buy into the fact that we don't know who owns this that this part of the lake, and that's why we're not going to do it. If we don't know who owns this part of the lake, how can we use this as an alternate site to unload the harvester? Um, oh, at Mike, excuse me, Mike. So actually, the village I think did some work in that area. Somebody's brought some dirt in and packed it down there the, over the last couple of weeks. So it's, it's shored up pretty decently for the time being. Well, I, Wait, I, so I, they, I see this big undercut. It doesn't look like whatever, I don't know who did that and, and, and how, and if that was the, our, um, our, you know, our public works guys, but some, you but know, we can dump dirt into it. Is somebody throwing perfume? Know who it owns it? They're actually doing something productive here. It's a roadies. I think I sent Mike, uh, you, the uh, 
property uh, aerial on that area and the, the issues that were at hand. Right. And if you guys want to throw it back up on the council for a motion, go right ahead. Well, I'm just saying, John, that, you know, this, this looks like it's going to come into the lake here. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. I know that people want to do erosion work somewhere else, but this looks like it's critical to me. And, um, you know, one of the discussions in the past was this is an alternate site for unloading the harvester. I'm not sure that's true. I don't know where you would put it. Um, and how could we be dumping it in there if we're not sure who owns, the, especially this piece right here where all the reeds are at. So yeah. um, I guess this is this is probably just a diatribe and a, a, a fr frustration, but um, I, I, you know, I don't understand why. Uh, I, I don't understand it either. If not for erosion purposes, somebody needs to be concerned about this roadbed. Well, I think, as I said, uh, uh, there has been uh, or was between Mike Smith, Mike Powell, uh, and Andy uh, a number of meetings on how they were going to approach this. So if somebody's seen dirt going in there, that's probably one process that they're trying to get this under control. Mm. As far as payment, uh, that is to say, expending dollars, um, it's going to be the village uh, to get it under control. And uh, as I showed on the aerial, it's a confluence of a road easement uh, to what would be on your photograph. And what I'm looking at the right of that picture is uh, an outlot owned by, it's one of three outlots that are owned by uh, the residents on Schenken. And uh, that's where all of those boats are parked. So those are uh, property line issues and uh, um, whatever your choice is to go forward. Um, Do you have this aerial image that, that you're talking to? Or I mean, I, I have the, the property gateway. It's not, definitely not clear. Yeah, I'll throw it up on there and I'll direct you where it is. You, you want to stop sharing real quick and then I'll throw it up? I'm not sure if I can figure out how to do that. Up top, you drag your mouse all the way to the top and hit stop share. Okay, I'll, I'll pull this up, right? This is that area, right? I mean, That's correct. So there, yeah. there's, there's, uh, hold on, details. Yeah, there you go. This is the outline here, isn't it? Way over here. I mean, this whole area, it, it's not tied to anything, whatever this is, right? Yeah, that, that actually is a, uh, owned by the village. This? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, who else owns anything here? It doesn't seem Most like anybody else. Those people that live on the lake don't own that lakefront. Yeah, they do. We do remember every time I say it's owned by the village. Anytime the water hits the edge of land, it's controlled by the DEQ and DNR. Okay, took us four months to get the uh, necessary permit to go down and do any improvements of the Greenaway drain, because that's under the control of the DNR. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, if you go back to that. Um, yeah, I will. And uh, and look at it. You can see uh, the road easement is that red red line running down. So uh, at the very low, uh, very south of it, double O one is a park, correct? And so is double O two. But double O two is sitting. I should say ninety six is is sitting in the road easement. So uh, Mike. Uh, Hurst, I believe the picture you took is over here. Up yeah. there, right. Correct. So um, as I understood what they were trying to do was get a DNR permit for them to come in and dump some form of protective uh, uh, rock, dirt, or whatever in there. So this is the area where it's really bad is up here. Who oh, John, here? they've done that. And they've, they've put in dirt and they've packed it down. So it is right now, it's sh far my, as far as I'm concerned, it's shored up for the time being. Oh. Yeah. I'm not concerned about it anymore. I was before. Well, uh, but that doesn't mean it isn't a good test site for natural plantings, Mike Hurst, right? Isn't that what you're trying to get done? Well, yeah, I, I think that, you know, 
I don't know about the rest of you. I think this is the number one site for erosion problems in, on the village right in the, on our on our lake right now. Mm -hmm. And if somebody can identify something else that's uh, not owned by a subdivision, you know, that's great. But I think this is the number one site, and I think that it needs to be addressed. I'm not, and I, I don't, I don't agree with uh, Doug. I, I'm not sure that throwing and packing down dirt is going to do the do the job here. Well, that might not be the end of what they're doing either. You know, they might be uh, uh, might be putting up some kind of uh, riprap on top of it. Um, could be putting pilings in. I don't know. You know, you, you hate to see the road uh, because the edge of the road there. I mean, Mike Hirsch, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you you have a lot at risk there. You, okay, you, so maybe maybe what we need to do, John, is understand what exactly they are doing. Okay. Well, um, why don't I, I uh, put that on an agenda item for council with, uh, like, I think you were the one that identified that Mike Powell will be there. I better write this down. My retention skills uh, are good, but they're not that good. Uh, so uh, I will uh, get that printed and sent over to Mike Kondek to add it to the agenda for a discussion of the erosion issues uh, on Schenken, at the corner of Schenken and what, New, Newport, right? Yeah, Newport Court. You know, John, if, if they're doing a, a, a big job there and they're going to be putting in a lot more than packed in dirt and some stone and pilings or whatever, that's a perfect opportunity for us to come to get a, a contractor in there and, and finish it off with some erosion fighting plantings and things like that. I think that's great combination my question um is why would the uh the the manage, lake management board kind of informed that they were dumping something into the lake shouldn't we at least have been informed of this uh yeah i guess so i mean i i say it that way not out of disrespect for the question believe me um but but out of the knowledge that uh, the the council tends to think some of their advisory boards should only advise and not be uh, have any advice. Although I shouldn't say advice and if any information provided to them on these kind of issues. Um, yeah, it's no different than the green away drain, right? I mean, how long have I just mentioned we uh, Mike Powell and uh, Smith at that point in time were. We're, we're trying to make sure uh, that uh, if you go on the other side, furtherly, southerly, um, what is going on is uh, you see where the Greenaway goes underneath Wolverine Drive to the south of that, uh, that area. Um, uh, Gabion baskets were put in to slow the flow to gather the materials and the sediment. And as you'll see, there's a little um, pond there that is just full of duckweed, right where you have your pointer right now, Ryan. And uh, so uh, in order to get the uh, Gabion baskets, which appeared somewhere between a Friday night and a Monday morning about 15 years ago, pulled and reinserted in that area cleaned up that it was finally required that the village go through the DNR and the DEQ. Uh, so, you know, that's an example of it. And of course, uh, what Mike uh, Hurst is referring to is you stop right there for a second, you see that point of land right in front of the, uh, well, I'll go further down by the, um, uh, back, uh, back by the Greenaway. That point of land right there, of course, is village owned. Mm -hmm. So that's another area that, uh, after I'm long gone here shortly, uh, I would think the board, the board wants to see what's going to go on erosion control there because somewhere out the track there will be uh, an access easement granted between the uh, walkway that's coming down uh, South Commerce there. And right about where you're going back and forth, uh, what was under negotiation is for a release and a redraw that plat so that the plat that the apartment buildings sit on 
uh, would go across, leave them their parking lot, and the rest would become a park for the residents of the village. A walking park and a biking park and a park with benches and, and et cetera. Uh, that's gone into the Hitherlands with the departure of Mike Smith. Anyways, uh, uh, I will uh, go back into the gateway or, you know, if you want to, uh, Ryan, uh, if you, I think I have this in my files anyways, uh, just take a print of uh, and send of that quadrant there mm -hmm. and uh, I'll put it on the agenda and send it to Mike. We own, the village owns this lot, this crazy one? Well, it, uh, yeah, it, it just happens to be a uh, unplotted, unowned. Yeah, it's, it's assigned to the village. If I was to go in and look up that, uh, what is that, 124 up there? This is 024, yeah. Yeah, you click on it once. You're alive, right? Yeah. It should come, it should come up and say access, uh, address not listed. No, there is no address. If you go up and the search in the, uh, um, I guess basically uh, uh, register a deed, you'll probably come to find out that it is in fact uh, under the village's uh, ownership. But it's got it, it. It's the lakefront of all of these houses. These houses don't own the lakefront. Well, uh, you know, if you move get those docks out of there. Yeah, if you if you move <laughs> into the main lake uh, along the southern shore on the western edge, uh, you'll find that that's the same kind of thing that, uh, that uh, yeah, go, go further west. If you, if you look at Lakeview, you see that whole area that is uh, yeah. basically on the edge there? Yeah. That is uh, village property and that is uh, although there are docks on it right now because under state law, it can be restricted for as a riparian if you're across from a lake from access to the lake. But that is officially recognized as a promenade, a walkway for village residents and other uh, public. This uh, whole thing through here? Thing right there. And it was never fully developed and there's been a lot of uh, battles on it and you, before the lake uh, became a true lake, uh, you might anticipate that the what is now the edge of the water was actually eight to 10 feet further out because you can see the deep hole there. That was one of the potholes. And if you go down a little bit west, there's another pothole that used to be there. So that dark colored area, the theory was that uh, uh, that was not going to ever be developed and it could finally be a, a walkway. And I've sold properties on Middle Straits Lake and we've been in legal battles because the promenade was dedicated to the homeowners of the entire lake. So there's, there's well, all kinds of weird things. You know, back. All, yeah, the, all of that is all these houses are the same way. What's that? I said, all those houses are the same way, this whole area, it's crazy. Yeah, you see, and then and yet if you go across- This you guy, see. look, he, he eroded his way into uh, right lakefront. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, I, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take that up to council. I have a note here and uh, we'll, we'll have uh, an update and uh, then we can go forward. And uh, I'll mention Mike first that, um, this is an area that the water board is very interested in doing uh, uh, natural planning uh, erosion control testing. Uh, will we get an access, uh, uh, will we be able to do that pending what their final uh, design uh, is in uh, handling the erosion that's there? Will that, will that be a positive step for you guys? Yeah. Okay. I have a feeling the most positive step is gonna be after November. <laughs> and that's not a reflection on you, John. Also, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, boy, too many mice here. Okay, next, uh, I believe next is canals, right? Right. Which we talked about uh, with um, the proposal from Progressive A&E. 
So is there any additional information there, Kathy, or? No, I'm good. I think we already covered it all. All right. Um, any link enforcement issues? Mike, are you happy with none. the lights now? Uh, the lights are still on. I'm not going to bitch. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Same, same stuff all summer. People parking everywhere. People just acting crazy. So. All right. Summer um, is quickly coming to an end, unfortunately. So. Yeah. The issues it, are naturally. Seem to be, yeah. Um. The. Topics for future business, three and five year plan. Um, I see something on that. I've sent out, I sent out a, a big file. We don't need to go over it tonight. I, I, I really think that this is, needs to be a, uh, a discussion with the whole board. Um, I mean, we've got the, we've got the bones of a very good plan. We just need to put it together and make it package it and maybe think about what we want to do long-term. Um, I would recommend we table this for a month or better yet in my mind, have a working meeting on this because I think this deserves our attention, but I don't want to try to run through it in the next five minutes because, you know, I, I think it's, it's this is a long, a longer conversation that I, I don't think we'll have time to get through. Tonight. Right. Absolutely. And I don't, we need don't to lead with it. but I would like to, you know, are you guys up for a working meeting on this? I mean, I don't want to throw everybody into that, but, uh, honestly, I think it's deserving of that just to focus on uh, long-term planning. We call it whatever we want. I certainly can, uh, you know, I can. I say we should do it. I mean, so my guess is September, October, things are going to slow down. We should dedicate a whole meeting to that specifically. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm for you, I mean, we, or you want to do it before then too. I mean, if you want to do it before then, I, I'll, I'll, I'll meet. After well, we, we you know after September seventeenth, whatever. I, I don't I don't mind. I just think that we need to spend some time on it, and if we spend the right amount of time on it, we're going to take away from all the other topics that we are piling up and getting involved with, and that they're all actually part of it as well. So yeah, we well, can handle it. Uh, you know, it's not less something we have to do this week. It's not something we have to do this month, but. Uh, I think it's something that we need to address in a, in a more formal manner. Uh, and uh, part of my pitch in this is that we formalize our plan and eventually take it to council and present it. And maybe we can get over some of these, you know, issues that we just talked about, a couple of issues where, um, you know, we're an advisory board, so we, we're going to give them advice on where we think the lake ought to be going. I think it's a good idea. So, um, yeah, let's let's stay on top of that and keep because uh, I'm I'm for uh, a working meeting. Let's get it finalized. So, um, boat count, bird count. No news is good news. All right. Yeah, I I agree with that. Uh, what's the situation? Uh, uh, aeration. So aeration, Anything? I finally got the uh, massive uh, pile of files from John. I'm starting to at least get somewhat educated on it. I posted them all online, but I'm actively sorting them. Um, so he, he's got them sorted. I, I'm going to go through, comb through first. Uh, I posted them kind of in the same area that I posted uh, the three to five year plan and stuff. So once I get through them once, I'll send you guys all out a link. Uh, and so the, and. I think everybody should probably read it if we want to have an educated discussion on what to do next. Um, but I, I need some more time. I got the files from John uh, probably just over about a week ago, but I really only started looking at them yesterday. So uh, once I get that organized, I'll send you guys an email of a link to where everything is. I think everybody should, I'll, I'll point out a couple ones that I think are important to start with. Uh, and then I think we'd be uh, in a position to have a better discussion. All right, uh, liaison reports. Uh, as, as my tradition is, is uh, Paul, did you have a meeting? Unfortunately, we did. Oh, um, I'll, you're make on it, a roll. I'll make it very quick, very quick. Um, we did welcome a new member that's going to be proposed to the village council by the name of James Clark. 
And he also unwittingly agreed to be our liaison to Parks and Rec. So we finally got that slot filled. So, John, please do whatever you can to get this guy approved. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem. I, I don't either, but we're really rooting for him. Uh, he probably won't like us after he finds out how much fun <laughs> he's going to have. Uh, we are going to have public hearings on three different things from the Planning Commission. The Amenia Park berm fence approval. The uh, review of the fence ordinance is going to be a, a, a topic, as well as the commercial vehicle uh, ordinance review. So we've got recommendations for all three of those. Uh, we're welcoming public comment, and we're going to have a public hearing next month. That. Um, and I think that's just about enough out of me. Agreed? That's more than we usually get, Paul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, uh, John, Village Council. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm actually looking them up uh, because it was uh, a majority of what the conversations were. Uh, it was a pretty short meeting, but uh, Mr. Powell was updating us on the uh, on the Village Memorial uh, Veterans Memorial parking lot extension, um, and of course it was Mr. Smith's last meeting too. Uh, we discussed uh, the next transition. Uh, we brought Mike Kondek in uh, officially as an interim administrator, uh, subject to some contract negotiations. Uh, prior to that, I was in an administrative meeting and we were looking at the possibility of, of reviewing and interviewing one possible candidate to replace Mike. Um, the council voted, uh, and I voted against it, that uh, rather than singularly hire a, uh, uh, the same consultant that went out and found Mike Smith and his predecessor, uh, the council wanted to advertise and interview all applicants and make the choice itself. Uh, we have moved beyond that uh, and uh, at uh, this coming uh, Wednesday's meeting in another administrative uh, meeting, uh, there will be some more discussion on, about bringing over a very professional recruiter. Um, as far as uh, other things that went on, uh, Mr. Uh, Condex uh pay was increased to equal uh originally would have been approximately a 25 percent increase in pay but council in its wisdom decided to give him a bonus and then turn around and and increase the uh the pay of all of the uh administrative people um and there was logic to in, increase Tabitha because she'll be taking over as a clerk because she'll have more duties. Uh, again, I voted against that, not for the principle of the increase, but for the methodology as to bringing in my conduct at an agreed to price, giving them a big bonus and then turning around and uh, doing other things that I thought the administrator should do. Uh, which is recommend uh, what would be adequate compensation for other work and duties that are going on uh, with his other staff. Um, I think the police report was fairly quiet. Um, I don't remember anything uh, uh, specific on that. And uh, as I said, uh, as far as, uh, oh, I do know one other thing, that one of the last things that uh, Mike Smith had done is he ended up getting a uh, grant from uh, the state to double the amount of uh, road improvement, uh, um, or I should say uh, road preventative erosion items like crack filling. Uh, so we, we were able to double the amount of those expenditures because we got a grant from the state. Uh, as far as other grants um, and other conversations, uh, the Park and Rec uh, uh, Board is, uh, uh, still moving ahead with its uh, five-year master plan. Uh, there was discussions on that. Um, Mr. Uh, Sinkowitz has been fairly adamant uh, about uh, having the 
um, building uh, restrooms improves, so the uh, and and that's fine. Uh, but in lieu of uh, Park and Rec's input, what ended up happening is a print was pulled together uh, by Mike Powell based upon the approval for him to do it uh, at the last council meeting, and uh, he brought that print forward. We will be redoing uh, the current bathrooms. We will be adding an addition. And Mike, in his wisdom, uh, had his uh, is going out for a, uh, a bid that adds an additional storage spot and a new re-roofing of that entire configuration of the lavatory. Uh, we will make them ADA compliant. And then uh, we're adding about 15 feet behind it. And then we have the ability to go in one foot increments. Uh, there was a, a large discussion and it wasn't, uh, what is the word? It was a vitriolic, uh, which was calmed down by our president to finally get an agreement that the Park and Rec's board and Mike Powell will meet and determine how much storage space they feel they need, not how much storage space council feels they should get. So uh, we have a new uh, improved lavatories coming up in the park and that's a win. So those are some of the highlights as I remember. All right. Depending upon what your point of view is. <laughs> um, okay, well. Pumpkins. I believe that uh, any comments from board members? No. Go see your kid, will you, Ryan? Say hi to uh, yeah, Hamilton. She's, she's in bed now. Oh, that's too bad. I worked I worked till six. She had a dentist appointment. She came home. I was up here. I didn't see her all day. Oh, that's too bad. Hey. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, you guys saw her as much as I did. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, I was going to ask. Is there, I, I got a note from the Michigan Lakes and Streams Association for a membership thing. I don't hmm. remember joining the first time. Um, are you all guys all members of that? That we all got joined when we did that class. Yeah. Oh. Right. So that it was an automatic one year, and so yeah, I got one too to re up. Okay. Are you getting well, the magazine? Yeah, I get the mag. Yeah, we got the magazine. I might, I might up re up myself anyway. It just. I was thinking about it, but I got yeah. kids. They got good centerfolds, don't they, Paul? Oh, I'm telling you. Boy, they had a bike last time. Whoa. I got that one in my locker. <laughs> um, okay. Well, with that. Um, uh, I move we adjourn. I have we'll, we'll I call for a moment. All right. Do we have a movement? I heard, did I hear a second? Aye. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, all right. Later. 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 Have a good night.